So this video is a brief introduction to uh, the subjunctive mood. And when we say the mood of a verb, we're just talking about the manner in which an action happens. Um, so for example, an imperative um, is just going to be a command, learn this. So the, the way in which the action is expressed is a command way. Indicative, um, literally you're just indicating something. So um, the way in which it's expressed is a showing way or a telling way. And then the subjunctive. Um, I am typing so that you might learn this. Um, subjunctive often refers to actions that are potential or might happen or um, exist in the mind, but not necessarily in action. So um, the formal definition of what the subjunctive mood is, is it's used to express actions that are ideas that exist in the mind, but not necessarily reality. As I mentioned, they're often potential actions. Um, for example, um, I teach so that you might learn. Um, I intend that you're going to learn, but that might be different from what you intend. So the you might learn part here exists in the mind. Um, it does not uh, necessarily exist in reality. Since you were in class, you saw the lesson. Um, my belief, my perspective, is that the reason you saw the lesson is because you were in class. Um, you very well uh, could have seen the lesson because you were standing outside the window of my classroom, who knows. But from my perspective, um, the you being in class is what helped you to see the lesson. I wondered where you were yesterday. Um, the confusion, um, the you were part of it, um, that's the part that exists in my mind, but um, I obviously don't know where you were. Uh, we should watch more videos. Um, we should watch is my intention, so that's something that exists again in my mind. Um, but it hasn't happened and it might not happen. Um, or a wish. I ask that you listen closely. So my hope is that you listen closely. It doesn't mean you're listening to any of this. Okay. Um, so let's have a little practice identifying the subjunctive. Read these sentences. Take about um, 30 seconds and pause this video and then um, start it up. So in the first one, I wonder why you weren't in school. You weren't is going to be in the subjunctive. Although I was running, I was still late. So the I was running, we're talking about the cause, the intention. Mm -hmm. uh, he knew what you did last summer. Um, what you did exists in his mind. So again, it's a thought. Um, we were talking and you were sleeping. There's actually no subjunctive in this one. There's nothing that exists only in the mind. Um, let's go to the mall together. We haven't gone anywhere yet. This is just my intention that we go. Uh, since you were working diligently, you did well yesterday. The you were working diligently is why I think you did well. Um, but again, that's only um, from my perspective, in my mind. Okay, so there are four tenses of the subjunctive. The present, the imperfect, the perfect, and pluperfect. We're only going to deal with two of them now. Um, the imperfect subjunctive and then the pluperfect subjunctive. Um, so, the two tenses. Since you weren't eating, you were hungry. So notice the you weren't eating part happens at exactly the same time as you were hungry part. You're hungry and at the same time you're not eating. So for the you weren't eating, you're just going to use the imperfect tense, um, just as we do in English. Uh, the word were always communicates imperfect, so uh, this should be straightforward for you. And again, notice they're happening at the same time. On the other hand, this second sentence, since you hadn't eaten breakfast, you were hungry, um, the not eating breakfast part happens first, hadn't eaten breakfast. You were hungry part happens second. So anytime um, you're talking about before a past action, you're going to use the pluperfect. Just as you typically do um, in other sentences, it's always going to be translated had verb. So in this case, had eaten. Okay. Now we're going to move into the formation of these tenses. Okay, the imperfect subjunctive formation, active. All you're going to do is you're going to take the present active infinitive, what we call the second principal part, and you're just going to add the personal endings. So you look here, amare plus mst, mostis int. You're going to get amarem, amares, amaret, amaremus, amaretis, amarent. And the same thing with wideo, duke, duco, or audio. All you're doing is adding um, mostis int, ost, to the infinitive, to that second principal part. And you're going to translate this just as you do any other imperfect verb or verbing. 
So remember, you're just taking, to form the imperfect, you just take the second principal part and add the endings. The pluperfect, on the other hand, what you're going to do is you're going to take the perfect active infinitive. So if in the imperfect you're taking the present active infinitive, the pluperfect, you take the perfect active infinitive. You just take the third principal part and add ISSE, that's that perfect active infinitive. And then all you do, just like with um, the imperfect subjunctive, all you do for the pluperfect is you just add the personal endings to that infinitive. So you have amawisse is your perfect infinitive, you add MST, mustis int, um, and then you get amawissem, amawisses, amawisset, amawissemus, amawissetis, amawissent. So what you should be looking for when you're looking for subjunctive verbs are that isse added to the third principal part, and then a personal ending. Um, much like any other pluperfect verb, you're just going to translate this had verbed. Okay. Um, there are two typical uses that we're going to talk about. Um, first is a cum clause. This tells you the circumstances under which an action might have happened. First word is always going to be the word cum, um, and it's going to be translated when, since, or although. Um, So here's an example. Um, oh, the verb is always going to use the subjunctive. Here's an example. Cum sm puer, Leona spectawi. Cum, when I was a boy, spectawi Leonis. I watched the lions. So here are a few more examples of cum clauses. Have a look, see if you can translate them. Why don't you pause me and then come back to me after trying to translate them. Okay? So the first one, when I was a boy, I watched lions. This one, when we, pluperfect, had eaten dinner, um, or maybe although we had eaten dinner, well, luimus, we wanted plus kibi, more of food or more food. Cum domum ambila remus, when we were walking home, notice aremus is just imperfect, so when we were walking, Multam pecuniam witty. I saw much money. Last one, cum magister dormi wiset, ab scola cucurimus. So when the teacher was, or rather, had slept, or since the teacher had slept, we ran away from school. Okay, the other use is the indirect question. Um, the question is going to be stated in a subordinate clause. So a typical direct question is, who are you? The indirect question, um, the form of that is, I wonder who you are. Um, subordinate clause is always going to be introduced by a question word, like who, where, what, I forgot who I was, and it too is going to use the subjunctive. Okay, um, so that's a brief overview of the subjunctive. Um, we'll go greater in depth in all this. Um, you can certainly look in your book um, to learn more about it. Um, and if you have any questions on this after watching this, um, I would recommend that you watch it a second time. And if you still have questions, you can either comment on this video, which I'll check, or send me an email at my email address. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow.